lately, it's been a lot of conversation revolving around insults and persecution due to recent events. Now, I'm not going to beat a dead horse here because Brett has done an amazing video on our response to the Olympic Games. So I want to primarily focus, though, on the topic of persecution, insult, and mockery, covering what it is, why it happens, and how we as Christians are called to respond. But first, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today and just the blessings that you give. Just pray over this video, Lord, that it encourage, challenge, or convict brother and sister who are listening to it. It just helps them to better understand this topic, to grow in it, to just see your word, how they can live out what you've asked about. It's in Jesus' name, pray these things. Amen. Let's face it. When these events happen, it's hard for us as Christians to handle. Naturally, as human beings, we want to give in to the emotional side of our brains and lash out. We want to step in and, I'm sure with good intentions, defend Jesus, defend our faith, defend our King. It can also be confusing and hard to understand why this even happened at times. You see, as we search scripture, what we begin to find is that we're called the fragrance of Christ in the world. And like a fragrance, there are going to be those who like us and want to draw near to us and others who don't. When we live out our faith boldly, we will cause the world to look at us and see a stark contrast to them. And unfortunately, this can often lead to insult, mockery, and in certain circumstances, persecution. Scripture puts it like this in 2 Corinthians 2, 14 through 16. To some, we are an aroma of life leading to life, and to others, we are an aroma of death leading to death. Imagine it like this. Have you ever smelled something so good on the air, food so good, that you had to track the restaurant down? You had to find out who made it, just so you could get a taste of it. So we are to some people. And yet to others, we're like a hot bag of garbage out on a hot summer day. Nobody wants to come near us. They walk around us, in fact. However, Jesus lets us know that we should not take persecution as a sign of failure. That we shouldn't take those people who want to walk around us as, as a bad thing. It's bound to happen. But instead, we should take persecution, insult, or mockery as a mark of discipleship and a cause for rejoicing and gladness. In fact, in Matthew 5, 10 through 12, he wraps up the Beatitudes with the following. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You are blessed when they insult you and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice, because your reward is great in heaven, for that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Apostle Peter writes about it in this in 1 Peter 4, 12 through 16 to Christians, sorry, 12, 4, 12 through 16 to Christians who are being persecuted. Dear friends, don't be surprised when the fiery ordeal comes among you to test you, as if something unusual were happening to you. Instead, rejoice as you share in the sufferings of Christ so that you may also rejoice with great joy when his glory is revealed. If you are ridiculed for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in having that name. So what should we do when we find ourselves in the middle of insult, mockery, or persecution? Well, it's natural to want to give in to anger and retaliate. How many of us have stories of that? To lash out at a person mocking us or hurting us, to give them a taste of their own medicine. However, as Christians, we are called to respond differently. As the Bible instructs in Romans 12, 17 through 20, do not repay anyone evil for evil. If careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes, if possible, as far as it depends on you, 
live at peace with everyone. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath, because it is written, Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him, and if he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in doing so, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. I think as we meditate and look at these scriptures, what we see is the first thing we need to do in this moment, whenever we face these types of moments, is to not fear or dread. We need to trust in God. We need to remember that God is in control and he is faithful. We need to trust in his sovereignty and remind ourselves of the storms that he has calmed in our lives and know that he will calm the future storms as well when we invite him into the situation, when we let him take control. Second, we should rejoice and be glad. And I know this is a hard one. Too easy sometimes to let anger come over us. But in his final beatitude, Jesus calls us to rejoice and be glad, a very action that goes counter to our human nature when facing persecution or insults or even being mocked. But he challenges us to look at the bigger picture of God's eternal kingdom and not focus on the immediate circumstances that will pass. When enduring trials of any kind, this shift in persecution is essential. Sorry, this shift in perspective is essential. For getting through trials by standing firm in our faith and worshiping our great and mighty God. This joy and gladness that are produced in this moment also become a testimony to his greatness, allowing others to see him more clearly. Finally, we need to love those who insult or persecute us. Instead of seeking to lash out at these individuals, we need to ask how we can pray for them, serve them, or how we can show them kindness. Now, to be clear, this does not mean that we condone their actions, but rather we choose to respond with grace and mercy, choosing to reflect the very mercy and grace that Christ has shown to us. This is why it's important we don't allow ourselves to be conquered by evil. Because when we give in to the negative emotions or lash out negatively, we only taint ourselves. You see, when we let anger seep in, it can only build into contempt. And this can unfortunately lead us to devaluing the other person and dehumanizing them. We need to be cautious of this. Because if this happens, it can harm us much more than it can ever harm the other person. Because it separates us from the heart of God and his intentions for us as his followers. To spread the gospel. To make disciples of every nation. As I wrap up, I want to share one powerful example of this. One powerful example of people who responded as Christ asked to persecution. Twenty-one Coptic Egyptian brothers were killed for refusing to denounce King Jesus. Brother of two of these martyrs expressed profound pride in their sacrifice. What he said was this in an article as he was being interviewed, we are proud to have this number of people from our village who have become martyrs. All 21 of those victims to this horrible act from the same village. When asked, when this brother, two of them, was asked if he would be upset if asked to forgive ISIS. He could only do one thing. And I want to pause for a moment as we're talking here. Because what would you want to do? Lash out? Demand action of violence? Would you forgive them? 
How would you respond in this moment? Well, this brother recounted how his mother, an uneducated woman in her 60s, said she would ask the man who killed her son to enter her house and ask God to open his eyes. For he was the reason her son entered the kingdom of heaven. During this interview, the brother, he prayed and said, Dear God, please open their eyes to be saved and quit their ignorance and the wrong teachings they were taught. This man prayed for those who killed his family. This man asked for forgiveness for those who killed his family. We should look at insult and persecution as an opportunity to grow in our faith and be glad for the opportunity to witness to others and grow with Christ. Knowing that in this insult, mockery, or persecution, whatever it may be, we're in good company. So here's the challenge for today. How can you love your enemy today? How can you pray for them? How can you show them kindness? How can you serve them or even love them in this moment to hopefully help them follow Christ, to know Christ, to come and know him better? Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Just ask that this video helps to encourage, challenge, or convict that we grow closer to you in an understanding of how we should respond to insult, mockery, or persecution. Thank you for walking with us, for being with us. Thank you for being a great and mighty God. It's in Jesus' name, pray these things. Amen.